because I want you to understand that as a cadre, as an instructor, it's a privilege to be able to get in front of students and represent the regiment. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to jump on here and do a video on cadres. Now I've done videos in the past talking about the different type of special forces cadres that work at the schoolhouse, but I wanted to go a little bit more in depth into this. And the reason why I wanted to speak about this is because I have a buddy of mine that I spoke with over the weekend and he mentioned that throughout the course, the course being, um, the Q course, which of course is broken down into several different sections, uh, selection, SOPC. Uh, he mentioned that the command is having issues with cadres. The sort of issues that he was talking about revolved around guys not being professional, guys finding ways to fail soldiers as they get ready to get to the regiment. And I wanted to address this because I think it's important that uh, you guys hear it from somebody that's been there, that's done it. I'm not saying that my way was the right way to do it. However, when I'm out and when I'm in the regiment and I'm getting my former students reaching out, I'm getting former students wanting to come to my team, I would, I like to think that I did something right. So with all that said, guys, I wanted to address this and just give you guys my two cents, not only cadres, but also students alike. Because I want you to understand that as a cadre, as an instructor, it's a privilege to be able to get in front of students and represent the regiment. So when I got that privilege, starting off in the 18 Charlie Committee, and then later on as a first sergeant in one of the other companies, I didn't take it lightly. I understood that students were seeing me for the first time as a representation of the regiment. So everything that I did was professional and I treated everybody the same way that I wanted to be treated. And you have to understand just because you're a cadre, that doesn't make you the gate holder. That doesn't make you the protector of the tab and the beret. You are given a standard by the officers that are in charge and your job is to ensure that those standards are met. It doesn't mean to degrade students. It doesn't mean to treat them like shit. It doesn't mean any of that, guys, because at the end of the day, I need you to understand something, right? Those students, those individuals, they're men just like you and I. They put their pants on just like you and I do every day. And you got to keep in mind that the way you're treating those guys, the things that you're doing, the thing that you're saying, would you want that to be done to you? And if the answer is no, then you probably shouldn't do it. I remember I was working over at the 18 Charlie Committee and there was this one incident that took place that 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 really uh, grind my gears to where I had to pull a guy aside and actually had to talk with him. Right. We were standing outside and it was. Like it had been raining that day. And if anybody knows range uh, 69, you know that down in the demo area, it's always just muddy. Just because we go down there, we blow a bunch of stuff up. So when it rains, it's like a freaking mudslide everywhere, right? So we had this uh, uh, detail. We had a bunch of kids, you know, prepping the area. And there was this big puddle of mud. And then one of my cadres took a rock and he threw it in the rock while all the uh, students were around it and mud splattered all over their, the actual uh, students. And he found that funny. He started laughing around. He started joking around. And I'm looking at him like, if these fucking kids weren't here, dude, or if I was one of these kids, I would probably beat that ass, right? Because why would you do something like that? Why? Because you have the power and you know that those kids won't say anything to you. As opposed to if you were just a regular dude on the street and you did that, somebody would have beat your face in. Like, I want you guys to approach it from the same concept, right? If you wouldn't do it when you're in civilian clothes because of the repercussions, then why would you do it when you're in uniform when you know that those kids are bound by uh, restrictions to the point where they can't do uh, what they need to do to defend themselves, right? 
So that's always been how I approach being a cadre. It's a privilege. So as you're teaching these guys, as you're mentoring them, keep that in mind because you're essentially training and coaching your replacement. And another way to look at this is those kids, they're being entrusted to you by their parents. And as a cadre, you probably have sons and daughters. Now just think about it. Would you want to send your sons and daughters into a environment that you're currently serving in if you're not doing the right thing? If the answer is no, then you should probably stop. And again, guys, this isn't a shotgun blast to all the instructors because there's guys out there doing the right thing, right? It's the small few that isn't that I'm talking about, right? I've been there. I've been around those guys. I know they exist. Another thing that you need to look at too is all these kids that are currently serving with you or that you are currently uh, training, they're going to get to the regiment. Some of the ones that you screwed over might not, but some of them are going to make it through. And once you're done being a cadre and it's time for you to go to group, guess what? You're going to run into those guys again. You might find yourself slinging lead down range with those same guys. And they're going to remember that asshole cadre. Right? And I don't want to put uh, this dude on the spot, but I personally have never met Dan Casaneda. Right? I've never met him. But every single 18 x-rays that I've had on my podcast, right? That's, that's why my set is different. I just got done... Uh, filming a podcast, they all know that guy till this day and they can't fucking stand him, right? They can't stand him. And it's because he was an asshole whenever he was an instructor to the point where the guy that I just spoke to, I asked him, hey, if you ever run into that guy, what would you do? He, he was like, dude, I don't know. I would probably beat his face in. If that's your badge of honor as an instructor, like treating students so bad to where if they see you in the outside world, they're going to beat your face in. Guys, that's not anything to be proud of, right? You should be that professional. You should be the guy that when these guys come back to SWIC, that they should want to emulate. They should want to be like, right? Guys, I just wanted to jump on here and get this message out again because word on the street is some of the cadres are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is causing command to react, all right? So if that's you guys, again, treat the students as you would want to be treated when you were a student. I'm sure you have fucking horror stories of when you went through of an asshole cadre that you didn't like. I know I did. That's why when I went back to SWIC, I made it my fucking job to make sure that I wasn't that guy, right? So again, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know if you guys have experience with this, all right? I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.